Welcome to the Tone Jerks Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gower, and with me today, we got Kyle McIntyre. I heard you doing the voice, Kyle so I had to... Kyle I'm Kyle McIntyre. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yes, um, I'm Kyle McIntyre. You start doing baby talk? Boom, 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 Yeah, baby doesn't know how to fucking say my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you need to my do baby is... always does. <laughs> my baby. Boom. All right, Kyle, what is new in your world? What is shaking? What is grooving? What is good? Um, I started working on, uh, Brian Rash's, um, his hammer. This is double cutaway. Hammer. 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 It's a hammer. Slammer. Hammer slammer. <laughs> yeah. It's not a hammer. It's not two M. It's kind of like one. a double cutaway, uh, yeah. to pick up two humbucker guitar. Mm-hmm. And it is the, they're Duncan designed. Is it the Duncan, is it Seymour Duncan or is it like the yo-yo company? I never really got any Or is it the donut company? Oh, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Somebody should make pickups that look like donuts. Like Homer Damn. donuts. But then you can't call them Dunkin's. Yeah. You... Call them Winchell's or something. Mm. Or, uh... <laughs> we could probably move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Anyways. Hey, yeah, and, uh, Brian's guitar. Yeah, so uh, got all together. Um, I'm suspicious that the wiring coming out of the pickup is different than what um, is normally, I guess, from Seymour Duncan pickups. Mm -hmm. Because you put a new harness in there, Yeah, I got the harness in there. Um, I got everything hooked up per the diagram that um, Sean provided, which is great. Did we say it was gun street wiring harness? No. I've I've said it before, I guess. Gun street, gun street, man, I cannot talk. Gun street wiring. Gun street wiring shop. Gun street wiring shop. I always forget the shop part. I don't. I mean, I did. (laughs) <laughs> I did. I used to. Until like when I would introduce like uh, Sean at like uh, Nam, he would always go shop. Yeah. He's he's, like, while he's putting his hand out to shake their hand. Yeah. He's like, yep. Oh, this a- is a Sean from Gun Street Wire. Shop. Yep. <laughs> I'm here with my hand. Shake it, please. Yeah. yeah. So I always remember. Yeah. I, um, I need that. Is it shop with the, I think it's a shop like the uh, British shop. I don't P. think so. No, I no, think it's, it's just not. one P. To- just kidding. I'll have to scratch that from what I've written down. I'm just kidding. Uh, for my, my script. It's <laughs> a bunch uh, of shit jokes today. We better God. fucking... <laughs> I know. We got to get this together. I know. Better um, drink a little bit more. So I got drink all my the... IPA. <laughs> 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 Your spinach. Um, they should make a spinach IPA. No. A kale one, at least. Uh, so... Well, they I make got... like weed beers. Man, this oh, is a hemp this, one. This is weed, man. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Cross, cross cool. All right. <laughs> nice, man. It's got weed in it, bro. Oh, 420 beer, bro. 420 all Are day. You 420 friendly, bro. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. anyways, I got it in there, got everything wired, um, but it's super low volume, so I have to figure out what's going on. But it, it sounds better than it did before. <laughs> it's just really low volume. Yeah, maybe something. I don't know. I don't, I don't really ever I'll do, the, check do the soldering, so I don't know what would go wrong it with that. A, it has a different jack on the like the input jack yeah is different than the one that sean provided like your traditional one that has like the bent tabs on it it's like a barrel style one what yeah it's i'll, I'll have to show you it's a I, I don't even know the name of the type of jack but it's it's something that hammer does weird it's like yeah a barrel like when you put the jack in you don't even see it it's like this it's in like a shield and you just have to weld, you have to weld, you have to solder onto the tabs. Well, <laughs> so I just, yeah. I just kind of like. It's like some of the times they have those for amps, but yeah. not. I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to troubleshoot that, but yeah. you're, you're, you're getting it going, getting yeah. that guitar underway. I really like that guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, I've only really ever played it unplugged. Okay. So I don't know what it sounds like, but. Well, hopefully we get it running again so uh, you can hear it. <laughs> yeah, Brian's like, oh, man, I'm excited to, for that guitar. I'm excited whoa, for that whoa, guitar. Whoa. I'm like, take it easy, pal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we might have some issues. <laughs> You've listened to the show before. This doesn't happen <laughs> this, overnight. Yeah. This is in Rome, dude. Yeah. Rome was built in a day. This guitar w- it will not be. Yeah. And I'm like, if you want to borrow a guitar, we have plenty because you're probably going to be waiting a while. No, it's, uh, I've, I've pretty much done. I got everything in. I just got to 
probably um, cut the uh, heat shrink and change wire, you know, just kind of change some things over. Yeah. Do my own little modifying on it, but it should be fine. I did start working on well, start. I continued working on my El Camino a little bit. Yeah, the saga continues. The saga, yeah. It's not as good as Star Wars, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, So I've done a lot, actually. I didn't, because I don't want to bore everyone to death, especially you, because you're like, oh, yeah, it's a car. Yeah, it's got wheels, it's like an engine. Yeah, cool. yeah, push the pedal, go. I painted it. Um, it looks damn good. It looks like a different car now, mm-hmm. but the in like in the engine bay. Yeah. Powder coated a bunch of stuff, which I've talked about. Um, I put the uh, I've got new wiring, so like the spark plug wiring. I got yellow wires. I'm like just kind of taking a chance. It looks fucking great in there. It's all mm-hmm. it's like cable management. It's like something I'm horrible at, but yeah. I'm learning. Like, le- <laughs> yeah, you're gonna try and make this work. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, I got the control arms in just to kind of mock it up and make sure they do fit with the whole brake um, calipers and the whole assembly. So I got that in there, dude. This thing looks like a million bucks. Yeah, I mean, uh, the modifications or upgrades that you're doing is for yeah smoother ride, safer. Yeah, ride for braking purposes and stuff like that. Yeah, because so it's it, like it had a, it a single uh, cylinder. Yeah, uh, people who may not know if they're new listeners, it's a what a '65 El Camino, yeah. so older vehicle that had like what drum it had brakes? drum brakes all around with uh, non powered. So it was all it was manual uh, drum brakes. This thing it was it, it, you had to really be careful. You couldn't you could you could get up to speed, but you could not stop in time. So yeah. you had to like. Uh, when I driving on the freeway, it was like a uh, nail biter. People would cut you off and slow down. It's like, dude, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. If you don't realize, I will kill you with this thing. Yeah. So you're, you, what, you got disc brakes? Yeah. So I got disc brakes in the front. Um, put those on today just to kind of, and the original equipment off of like a 70 Chevelle or something. Yeah. And so I didn't really know if they would ever really fit. So got them set up today and they do fit from what I can see. Yeah. They um, meet the aftermarket control arms that I just put on, which are tubular and mm-hmm. powder coated and really nice looking. And I mean, I'm really stoked for it. So you just start to get it back together so you can drive it. Hell yeah. Damn. Like uh, we did a lot of, uh, so your dad and I did a lot of work on getting the engine looking nice and putting, you know, just repainting. I, I refinished almost everything in that engine compartment. Mm-hmm. It looks damn good. Yeah. If I do say so myself. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and it's like a, some things that I've had sitting in my garage for probably close to six years. Jeez. Cause like I, I got things powder coat, I was all ready to go. And then I'm like, oh, I don't want to put that on because the rest of the engine looks like shit. I'm yeah. going to scratch that up while I'm trying to work on something else. So it's like, all right, finally putting these things on that have been sitting in my garage forever. So yeah, it's been a, on the to-do list for a while. Oh yeah. So I'm stoked on that. Um, that's my, what's new, what, what's uh, new with you. So I, Met up with a friend of the show, Co Schneider, oh. from the Flippin' Flippers podcast. Oh, sick invite, dude. Yeah, we literally invited you, but you said, oh, I'm working on the car. <laughs> you didn't give me a time. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, you're working on the car. And then he's like, and then you hit me up at like, I don't know, fucking seven, eight o'clock. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm ready to hang out with Co. I'm like, dude, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right. And I'm like, so like, and you're like, well, I, I should would have liked it. I'm like, you were busy the whole time. You're giving Which me is shit, true. Give me shit true. about it. I'm like, there's no need to even like hit you up again because you said, "Oh, I'm working on the car." And I'm like, "Well, the day of, let me hit him up again." Yeah, you could <laughs> have, bro. I was I was waiting by the phone. <laughs> and like you're, because I know you're not gonna work on your car at 4 a.m. and then finish by noon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you start at like 11:30, <laughs> or you're gonna start at 8 p.m. and then work all night. No, you were gonna work during the day, the hottest part of the day. <laughs> yeah, day. it was so hot. <laughs> yeah. God. And I'm, it's probably nowhere near as hot as it is in other, the other part, other parts of the country, but the sun is fucking brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. Even like today, like I had the day off, I'm um, working on that and just being outside for like 10 minutes, I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck. I'm like sweating like crazy. Yeah. I'm like Larry the lobster out here. <laughs> 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 but no, I hung out with Co. Um, he's like, we've been wanting to like kind of hang out since. I got my equits. Yeah. And it was kind of just oh, to be like- Oh, you're like elite now. You're in like yeah. another club. Yeah, we are. You're like, and oh, hey, bros. The e- where, where are my equits boys at? Equits boys. We're rolling deep. 
We got the whole squadron out there. Yeah. <laughs> How many of those equits are in San Diego? Uh, I think just Co. And you. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so we just hung out. It was really just like, oh, let's like, play with guitars and pedals. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, there's no other way to describe it than just like, yeah, just hanging out and playing with gear. Yeah. That's what we did. And I'm like, yeah, just to like, I don't know, we've been wanting to hang out for a little while. And then with like quarantine, you shouldn't be. And then now that's like, eh, you know, the guitar came in. It's like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> to hang out and play with, and to show off the guitar, which I was really excited about. Because uh, Co was one of the people who introduced me to Kevin Equitz, yeah, to get the ball rolling on doing the Rayburn, and um, I think I'd heard about Kevin. I think he was maybe done an episode of sixty way like years ago or whatever, and then I kind of saw it, and then it's his guitars, and kind of just fucked around, and then kind of got familiar with Co as a friend, and be like, oh yeah, and then we met Kevin and whatever, and then it was kind of like. Yeah, that whole thing started. So it really, I wouldn't have got that guitar if it really if it wasn't for Co. Yeah, I probably would have never initiated anything. Would have never like th- thought about it because like a lot of builders, yet again, won't do the Evertune yeah. because they're like snobby or up their own ass or stupid. Like they won't just do it because it's like oh, traditionalist. Bleh, that's gonna take away. The-. They just don't take the risk. Whereas yeah. like Kevin did and wanted the challenge and to do something different. And I think, you know, with Kevin's mindset, and I think he's spoken about it. And it's like, well, if I can take my guitars and do something more modern, but still make it my own thing. Yeah. Why not try it? It's like, do a Bigsby on it. Do, you know, like, nobody's asked, you know, him to yeah. uh, do a, a Floyd, but he may want to do that. Who knows? That's like your <laughs> traditional <laughs> fucking shredder. Yeah, you know. and that, that maybe I'm just putting that out there. But <laughs> if he's done it ever too, he's like, "God damn it, shut your fucking mouth! Keep my keep my name out your keep mouth, my name out your mouth." But it's like, yeah, it was a really cool idea and working with Kevin. And you know, I can't put it to words of how cool that experience was. And just like talking to Co about it because he's done that with his own equits. Yeah, he's like, "Oh yeah, so I did this. He did his a couple years ago." And then yeah. he, so he's like, oh, like kind of lived through that and getting your own custom guitar. And we're just like hanging out and talking about it. And he was like stoked to actually, cause you've seen it in pictures and videos and stuff like that. And he got it. He's like, oh, I want to try it. He's like, well, this feels great. It's cool to compare them. His is similar in that it's a one humbucker or one pickup uh, guitar in the bridge. But his is the Fuzz Rayburn that has the Pelican Noise Works half horse fuzz in it. Yeah. And it has like um, gold foil. Um, 2121 I think from Righteous Sound okay. instead, of, instead of the PAF that I have from Righteous Sound yeah. so they're somewhat similar whatever um, they're yeah it, it was just cool to try them out his is like a little different in the neck and it's just like going back and forth between the two and I'm like yeah it's it was just a cool experience of, like of him just like oh seeing this hearing about it knowing about it forever as long as I've known about it and then He's probably seen the progress picks as I have, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, this is a cool guitar. <laughs> it's actually like it's just it's a thing." And I'm like, "Yeah, this is this is it." And it actually just feels completely different than his, actually. So not only in the body paint and like you know the looks of it, and like, oh yeah, it like the neck feels different. So Kevin was doing his own thing with each guitar. So just to nerd nerd out about that was like fun, and just hanging out and talking about gear. Um, I uh, loaned him a couple pieces of gear that I, you know, was stoked to actually like, oh yeah, when somebody asked about it, it's like, oh yeah, what about the Riot? Like, I've never actually played one. So I was like, oh, that's one of my favorite distortion pedals. It just Don't fuck it up. Oh, no, it go. just sounds fucking great. And so I'm like, dude, you need to fucking try this. So just letting him have a go at that. He's like, wow, this sounds great. And he was posting about it. And then uh, one that he didn't ask about, but I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I bet he'll like this, is the Almighty Bass from uh, yeah. Daredevil that Johnny bought me made by Johnny at Daredevil and I'm like this Whoa. is the fucking like one of the coolest fucking fuzz bass distortion things it just sounds killer so I was kind of like you know he was like yeah well let's plug it up let's try it and so I played his uh, out of, you know just his jazz bass out of his uh, Ampeg setup that he has and then I'm like nah, let's just turn it on and he's like whoa that sounds great <laughs> And I'm like yeah, it just sounds good I'm like there's three knobs it sounds awesome he's like whoa that sounds like uh, like he said, like, the Scott Pilgrim bass from that movie, just that oh, wow. aggressive thing. He's like, it's just that in a box. He's like, whoa. And so we're talking, I'm playing, and I'm just doing, like, you know, riffs and kind of just 
messing with a couple of the knobs of like less fuzz, more fuzz or whatever. And then he's like pulls out his phone and he just goes on reverb and he's just looking like, oh man, there's one for a hundred bucks. I should just, I should just buy it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Damn. Look, I mean, watch it, but you can borrow mine that I have. Cause I don't really need a it right now. Cause we're not even gigging with just in case, but I mean, I'm going to want it back. I'm like, don't keep it. <laughs> you yeah. need to borrow it. I think I've been sending the, the Northern creeper, from Daredevil around to a couple of people and all of them like you, yeah. it's not yours you play it for a while but it's mine <laughs> that's funny you you have to say that in your head you have yeah. to say you don't have to and I'm like yeah you ain't keeping that one <laughs> right. a lot of people are like wow this one's a great one and I'm like you're not really a fuzz guy are you so I'm like hey 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 I oh, need that one back I like your glasses well you can't have them yeah yeah no I just saying look good on you yep still can't have them <laughs> still can't have them <laughs> but yeah no it was so he's, he's borrowing that it was just cool to like when you like have like I don't know, your kind of favorite pedal. It's almost like showing somebody like, oh, watch this funny YouTube video. And if they like it, you're like, yes, I won. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you show somebody this really cool pedal, I'm like, if they like it, like, yes. It's mine though. <laughs> and it's also like, uh, you know, uh, Johnny uh, Daredevil is a, a friend of ours. Yeah. He just makes really good shit. And it's kind of like a, we're almost doing the grassroots guerrilla style marketing of like showing <laughs> friends. I'm like, well, do you like this? Like, oh, you might like this. Try it. I'm like, wow, I really like that. That's what it works. <laughs> That's how it works. That's almost better than like, hey, here's a YouTube demo video of me playing this. I'm like, no, just fucking let somebody play it. Yeah. You're anyway, going to like it. Or yeah. You're not. No, that was fun. It was just kind of like, just like, it's fun. It, like explaining it. It's like grown adults hanging out and playing with pedals and guitars. <laughs> That's yeah. what I did, and it was fun. We hung out for a while and just said, you know, had some pizza. What? And then we had some beers. What kind of pizza was it? Uh, I think it was Little Caesars. Oh, that's all right. So, uh, yep. And I could have said anything and be like, yep, yeah, that's good. True. We had bagel bites. What? <laughs> <laughs> Tostinos or whatever. <laughs> whatever. The... Hot pockets. Yeah. Uh, you I, know what? Hot yeah. pockets are pretty good. Yes. Hot people po- people give them shit, but. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, it's like wrong with a lot of them are really good. I mean, I mean the pizza ones are fucking ace. I remember you could get those at school, at least my school. Yeah, those are fucking ace. But, but yeah, that's uh, my what's new. Just kind of hanging out, uh, trying some gear. I did. Uh, I did that borrow. That show's dumb. You ever watch that show? I'm not a fan of that at all. Seventy show. I think I liked it when I was a kid because I'm like, yeah, this is cool. It's on TV. They're like in high like high school smoking weed. I'm in middle school. I'm like, that's what cool is. Hyde yeah. is, he's smart ass. <laughs> he's cool. He's a fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <Anyways. laughs> All right. So uh, we put a call out for topics and questions in the Facebook group. We were going to do Instagram, but the Facebook group just fucking knocked it out of the fucking pack. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh there's uh yeah so many good ones here so uh you know the fucking the dog squadron you know took care of us so let's uh get to these what do you say kyle yeah we do it all right maybe the the top of the list here i think we have uh andy walsh coming in hot uh he says uh how about this scenario you get your first gig in six months and after agreeing to play you find out that you are opening the night at four thirty p.m Okay. All right. Uh, I Is think there we've, we've uh, a downside to that? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we're probably in bed by eight o'clock. I don't mind opening. <laughs> like opening shows is good. Yeah. Middle slot is the best. Yeah. Closing is the fucking worst. It sucks. Yeah. It's like, it is not like you ain't headlining, bro. You're fucking closing yeah. the show. You could be getting home at like two, three o'clock. I've been home at four o'clock before. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, you're closing the show. And even, like, all ages shows, closing sucks. Yeah. Because the people may not stay for you. You're the one who has to, like, keep everybody around and hope the bands before you didn't suck. Yeah. That the people left. Hopefully, see, I think the the problem is, you know, we think 4.30, no one's going to be there. People might be there. Might be there. Might be rocking. Yeah, it depends if he's talking I mean, about, like a, like, like, a, like, a, like, a festival or something. That yeah. People are going to be there. Or, like... Even just like an outdoor show where there's like maybe six or seven bands and you're the first one. It's like, fine. It's fucking do yeah. it. It's a good chance. I mean. Middle's always the best. Middle's the best because there's like people who are there at the beginning and people are yeah. coming to the end. They're all there. Plus all your fans and friends. You use the term fans loosely. <laughs> um, you're supporting family members. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, you do have fans for your band and stuff like that. Yeah. But it like you're, you know, the middle's the best because that's like <laughs> where like the most amount of people are going to be. And also, yeah, you don't want you don't have to be the first one there and like warming up the crowd. And then you know you don't have to be like, oh, cool, I'm just hanging out until we play. Yeah, yeah. First is good. I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, being like last in closing, it's just it's the worst, especially on like week days if you're at a bar. I mean, that we'll, sucks. We'll, we'll still do it, but yeah, weekday at a bar. No, weekday at a bar. Even very if it, rarely, we're you, like we're start not, at eleven thirty, or we, we kind of have a like a hard stance of like no, yeah, we just don't do it anymore. Um. But it, like I don't know, I heard like I remember seeing like rumblings of things like or, like people talking about like starting shows earlier, like, even yeah. for bars of like maybe starting shows at like seven, and you know, right now it's like or not now because no shows are going on, but it's like it would be like hey doors open at nine thirty, first band starts at ten, whereas it'd be like okay doors open at seven, first band hard at eight, would be great. They better be hard too. Yeah, and then do a three band show. I mean, yeah, good one. Um, Boom, like a three band bill instead of like, hey, let's do five fucking bands at a bar starting at ten p.m. Yeah, on a Tuesday. No. <laughs> yeah, two two. I guess depends just, on the time of the week or you know what what day it is. If it was like a New Year's Eve show, then yeah, stack it with like five or six bands. If it's or Friday or Saturday, that's probably still okay. Yeah, there's probably and, still going people there, <laughs> and I think it was like the whole thing was like, oh yeah, bars think like, oh yeah, nobody's gonna be drinking and saying, I'm like, no, all the band people could just be hanging out after the bands, for hanging hours. out, yeah, <laughs> and drinking. I don't know, and then because like some people are like, oh yeah, I want to go see shows, but I have to work, so you go see the band play at like eight, yeah. and you can still fuck it. Anyways, I I don't mind playing early. Okay, I do not have a problem with that at all. I got um another one from uh, Co Schneider. This is a Co Schneider heavy episode. He says, "Freedom of speech, good idea or bad idea?" California, or that—that that was a question by itself. And there's another one: California concealed carry laws <laughs> that didn't have a question mark. So These are just top period. Periods. Yeah, and then um, he's just jamming them all in. And then his last one is, "Do I look fat in these jeans?" All right, let me start at the top. Yeah, freedom of speech. Um, yeah, it's good. Definitely. Why, why not? And like, yeah, not everybody's going to agree or want to listen to what you have to say. So just remember that. Yeah. And then it's like, I don't know, think about it. It's like this podcast. Not everybody wants to listen to it. And then who knows what, if people agree with us. A lot of times we just spew misinformation. Yeah. But freedom of speech, (laughs) it's like just because you can say something doesn't mean you should. It's like the whole like, the whole, (laughs) the whole predicament. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, but you know, you oh, still it's like, yeah, like the Jurassic Park. I'm like, yeah. your scientists were so <laughs> c- concerned with whether you could that you didn't exactly think that's whether what or not was, you should. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you, you know, do whatever you feel is, is right. You know? Yeah. And the, well, there's going to be repercussions. One of my, one of my favorite things <laughs> is read the fucking room. <laughs> if you're yeah. kidding. Oh, man. Oh, man. You see all these stupid videos where people just spout off or whatever on <laughs> on like social media I'm like man read the fucking room dude <laughs> yeah. it's like, like yeah you may have a point that you want to convey but yeah. you know you know you think about some of those yeah. you should probably keep to yourself yeah the points and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah California concealed carry laws I don't I don't really know anything about that that's more yeah. you're up your alley so you can you can voting? yeah it's pretty difficult to get one and it's all determined on Individual counties, so the individual sheriff in that county, yeah, can determine. There's a new sheriff in the town. Yeah, there's a new sheriff, <laughs> so uh, it just depends on if they will issue or if they won't. Yeah, um, certain occupations. Yeah, a lot. Basically, let's say you're handling money, you're transporting money. They might be more willing to. Um, if you're more of a target, I guess. Yeah, they, they might be willing to uh, or issue one if if you have been in an altercation before and you think this person's going to attack you again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there, it's all about circumstance. You can get one, um, but it is very difficult. I'm more concerned about open container. Yeah. Why is that not a thing? Open carry. 
<laughs> yeah, open carry. Well, no, open, open, <laughs> open container. Like, yeah. How come that's not a thing? That's yeah. like that made me think. I know it's a, a, a jump, but I'm like, why can't you do that? Yeah, like, you can do it like in Vegas, but not like anywhere else. What the fuck? It's yeah. like you can't have like a beer just like when you're just hanging hanging out. Yeah, it has to be on your property hanging or. Out. Damn like, it, you no, got me. Yeah. It's like, it, I, I said it. I basically just did the, the thing where I like throw the basketball on the backboard and did my own alley-oop. <laughs> Set yourself up, bro. The, the AI style. <laughs> yeah, so. Alan uh, Iverson hasn't been a thing since 2004. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying, uh, was it AI as in like. The, Artificial intelligence. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that I'm makes sense a- too. Iverson, baby. I think he was. He was on top of it, bro. I think he could, he did that a bunch. Or maybe it was Kobe. RIP in peace. Oh. Oh. But, so, um, yeah. anyways, like, yeah, you can't just have a beer when you're just, like, walking around. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I think they're worried about, like, oh, everyone's going to be a fucking alcoholic. Be inside your house when you do that, or yeah. in a bar. It's very limiting. Yeah, I was thinking. It's not very free, you know? Yeah, I was thinking, like, you could, like, drink, country. drink a beer on your, like, you know, uh, what, driveway or in your lawn. Yeah. Front lawn, but if you step on the street, that's when it's legal. I guess if there's a police officer there to catch you. Yeah, it's not like, boo! (laughs) Yeah, as soon as as you touch the the asphalt, it like lights up. (laughs) Boo! (laughs) Boo! Unidentified cerveza. And Uh, then, uh, do I look fat in these jeans? Uh, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say no. Oh, shit. We we have a... Conflicting. We reached an impasse. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, I don't... I mean... I'm going to say no. And then I'm going to say... Uh, give me some DMs on those. We would, we would... Send me some pictures. We bro. would. Yeah. So, yeah. co, no, us, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why my instinct was to say yes. Okay. So, this is from Cameron Bahrami. 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 Yeah. Cameron. <laughs> Cameron B, baby. Uh, he's, he uh, wrote... Can't remember if y'all mentioned it before, but uh, what's your songwriting process like? Also, do you write lyrics beforehand and try to fit them into a song, or do you write lyrics after the song is made? I would say uh, we're writing a song right now. Yeah, in the band, a little of both. Yeah, so I'm we're using the uh, song in the Lolly Gagger Canalia demo, um, and we're turning that into like a plane without a pilot, like a full fledged song with lyrics and all this shit, and. The, why that came up is because one, I had like basically written the parts of like, oh, it's a main riff. This is a verse. This is a pre-chorus. This is what a chorus would sound like and blah, blah, blah. And then we were just jamming it or, you know, uh, Brian, our drummer mentioned it, but like, let's turn that into a song. Like that song, the one with the wood pedal, let's turn that one into a song, <laughs> the wood pedal one. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. And I'm like, it's super easy. I know it. And then, um, you know, we were playing it and Kyle's like, you know what? I think I have something. So he pulled out his phone. He just had like, Lyrics he had written, and then he kind of tweaked them to fit the chorus of the song. Yeah. And then we were just kind of going back and forth. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then uh, we structured the whole song, and then I'm I'm writing lyrics for the verse. Yeah. And I kind of have ideas, and I was just scatting pretty much and just, you know, making, you know. Beep, bop, ba, do, ah. Yeah, while we were playing it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I kind of got li- the lyrics from Kyle. So the lyrics that I'm writing are kind of based off of his chorus. So this is something new that we are doing but it's so many We're different it, bro. styles that we've done before or di- so many different ways that we've done before the most common one that we used to do is just like kyle writes the chords and he writes the lyrics and then we all just kind of play it same yeah. or i would write the chords and the may lyrics. i have your attention please and we all just play I have it. a new song exactly follow my lead watch for the changes mm-hmm. <laughs> or um for one of the songs, we just kept jamming more and more and more the whole. Um, so whereas this new one, I kind of had all the parts from the demo. Yeah. The other one we all wrote together. We just kind of like pieced it together. I'm like, oh, here's this idea. What about this idea? And then we wrote the music. And then I was just, I was like, I got nothing for lyrics. And Kyle wrote all the lyrics for it. And it, yeah, turns out really well. So there's not really any rules or limitations of how we're doing it anymore. And I really like that. Yeah. Because we're comfortable with our instruments, our band members, ourselves, what style we're going for, and it just has to really sound good. That's not to be like an asshole of like, we're the best. Like, we just want the songs to sound good. And we all know what we like and what is not a huge super stretch for the band. Yeah. And 
yeah, we kind of go for it. So we all have the same mindset. So I think that's a big part of our band. It's not like everybody else's. Like, you can't just say like, oh, well, everybody's on the same wavelength. You got to just go for it. We are. So that's what's really cool about the band. And we're all songwriters. That's something different for our band. Yeah. Uh, Brian uh, writes music and songs and sings. And he knows like, hey, drums, you got to leave room for vocals, which, which he does. <laughs> is great. Also, when you're like, dude, I don't know what to do with this part. Mm-hmm. Well, hold on. Let's uh, try this. Let's shorten that or lengthen this and clip that and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Let's do it. Let's try that. Yeah. You know? So you can have... Not to say that like somebody who doesn't have that you know songwriter perspective would be good, but yeah, yeah, really to throw that back and forth, and you, I don't know, not that you wouldn't trust somebody's opinion, but it's like maybe more so because I know Brian's writing style and his songs, and I like the just in case songs that he does. I like the stuff that he does with his instrumental stuff, with his like rational, like yeah. all like st- all the things that he does, and Kyle obviously like stuff that he doesn't play without a pilot's good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I like the stuff that he does with his, uh, you know, um, instrumental. I always like, like what? What would you call it? It's like, uh, um, his his vaporwave. No, well, your stuff. It's like uh, oh, my it, stuff. Retro wave, vapor wave. Yeah, it's like retro wave. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, it doesn't really fit. I don't know. Yeah, you, I listen to like the stuff that is retro wave, and I don't really think I fit into that. But but it's like yeah, you're composing your own music yeah. and songs, and it's like you of classic synth sounding instruments. Yeah, you have like a mind about you about yeah songwriting. So we really go back and forth, and that's what is unique about us. Not that we're the only ones who do it, but I'm like to say like oh yeah, your band members, you just throw a song together, guys, yeah. and just kind of hot potato it. You might not be able to do that with your yeah. band. So to answer Cameron's question. Uh, we do everything. Yeah. We kind of have, we don't color inside the lines really anymore. Yeah. We Not don't, that we're amazing and we're. No, it, I think we're. You know, all the synapses are firing. Yeah. They, I mean, no, definitely not. We just like <laughs> drank White Claws at the, yesterday and just kind of like played <laughs> and jammed. But uh, we're not saying no as much as we used to. Yeah. It could be because like we're in our 30s or the fact that we've been playing music for so long yeah. with this band. It's it's a really cool thing. So if you're like starting a new band, don't say no to ideas. Yeah. Especially like collaboration ideas. All right, this is another one from Co Schneider. We're just going down the list here. Uh best thing to have on fries besides the usual ketchup and mustard. You know, like extreme fire toppings. Uh, Did you say fire or is it fry toppings? I think it's supposed to be extreme fry toppings. I, I thought fire like fire emoji. Oh. Like not uh, like fire like toppings. Not, yeah, like what's extreme fire, baby? I, anyway, for me, I guess I'm pretty boring. I'd say garlic fries. Yeah, those are, those are the best. Good. You can't go wrong. Like you'll love the absolute shit. It's a win for you, but for everybody else, it might not be. <laughs> when you're talking to them, like, hey man, <laughs> you gotta get uh, animal fries, dude. That's a uh, what? cheese, mm-hmm. fucking uh, grilled onions, uh, the spread. Yeah, like the. It's like Thousand Island Thousand, spread. Yeah. Man, my mouth is watering just thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> I don't so think I've good. ever had that. I should should give it a shot. But Dude, I'm also... You have to eat it with a fucking fork. That's how messy this shit is. Yeah. I would say, I mean, it could be cheating, but just carne asada fries. Yeah. That's, nah, that's, that's, that's cheating. Good. That's cheating though, right? I mean, not really. But it's, it's fucking good. I think fucking the good. fries are still the main component. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I got a burger with fries in it. You still got carne asada, you got fucking no. like, what, guacamole, sour cream, fucking like pico de gallo on there, probably fucking oh, yeah. cheese. Oh, Come yeah. on. You can't, sour, yeah. you, you can't cheese, go wrong. Sour cream. Dude, and, uh, as much salsa as you can put on the top of that yeah. without it running over the side. I would say that's probably the- Count me in. That's probably the goat. But I'm pretty boring with fries. I'll just eat them plain. I don't do ketchup. Yeah. I prefer almost little to no salt either, because yeah. the pota- the potato itself is kind of the is flavorful. Yeah, that's fine. I like it. <laughs> I uh, the other day I got um, like extra, not extra, but just crispy fries at In and Out, mm-hmm. and people always complain. People always bitch about In and Out fries. Oh, they're fucking too soggy. Yeah. Yeah, they are because they're trying to fucking crank them out. I'm sorry, but just get them crispy. Yeah, you moron. You can you can <laughs> make that. You can order that, Kyle. I'm just on your back. I'm like, you people yeah. are dumb, dude. Yeah, you're get, right. Get on Kyle's. You know, come fucking correct. Yeah, fucking piece of shit. <laughs> so you can order them crispy. Yeah, and they come out like pretty damn fucking good. I've never had that, but I know it's a thing. Yeah, and I think I might try 
Because I just got regular fries the other day. I didn't want to yeah. do the animal. I was, you know, not feeling super classy. I wasn't feeling animalistic. <laughs> my, um, my urges. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try crispy animal fries. See if we'll do that. See if they'll like go for it. Like, no, man, that's too many specialty. I'm sorry, special man. Items. We're calling the cops. They're already here. <laughs> <laughs> man, could you just leave? <laughs> Sir, get yeah. the fuck going. Yeah, he has an extension to this actually too. It says, uh, same question, but with nachos. <sighs> I don't even know what the fuck goes on nachos. I mean, like, what else would you put on it? I mean, just you could put. It's kind of the same thing as carne asada fries. But that's it. Like sometimes you, people put beans on it. Yeah, like refried beans. Yeah. So like my normal nacho order is nachos. So like tortilla chips, right? Um, cheese, carne asada, sour cream. They probably put more cheese on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't do. Um, Guacamole, though. Mm. At least from this one place, I don't know. I think yeah. it makes, makes my stomach feel gross. Yeah. But uh, I do lettuce and tomato also, like diced. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a little cool. With jalapenos, too. Yeah. There you go. See, you got Fuck. it. I don't get nachos all that often. So Dude, I couldn't really great. speak to that. Um, I guess what else could you do? I mean, whatever. I mean, that's probably all you can do with nachos. Yeah. We've ex- ex- exhausted nachos. Yeah. <laughs> Nacho cheese, maybe, but that's about it. All right, Andrew Walsh says, are cargo shorts still a thing? Am I just an old guy that dressed the same for 20 years? <laughs> so I mean, cargo shorts, um, I don't wear them. I don't think I've worn them since freshman year. Yeah, I think for me it's I, yeah. probably like maybe eighth grade. I got into, yeah, Dickies shorts. Once I got those, that's all I wore for yeah. years. And I probably need to get another pair of those but i had the kind that were like the zip leg had like the zip like it turned from pants to shorts oh fuck <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like once you lose the leg it's fucking it's well like then they're now worthless. they're now they're shorts. they're shorts forever yeah now they're shorts that, what's the hell's the matter with that? <laughs> or you could use it to bike in i guess because you don't want to get caught in the in the um whatever the sprocket you know because yeah. they tuck it into so you just you could walk around all day with just one missing yeah uh yeah, no, cargo shorts. Yeah, I mean, I, I get the appeal for sure. The extra yeah. pockets? Come on. Yeah, but put shit like, in it. You can put how your many fucking pockets do you Walkman have? on one. <laughs> Dude, the, just think about, like, the amount of pockets and the stuff you could put in there. How many pounds would those, like... Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> when you're walking, psh, 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 put your keys uh, yeah. in it and just, like, change. banging against your leg and shit. And you're like, oh, hold on, let me grab my phone. Oh, or, uh, oh, God. Which, which one is it? <laughs> I, I, I get the appeal of extra pockets for sure. I remember uh, there was like something going around, I guess, in uh, middle school. They wouldn't let us put our like pencils in our cargo shorts. <laughs> Why? They like, uh, this is like the very first day of school. No pencils in cargo shorts. Someone like got a pencil jammed in their leg. Oh, God. Because it like turned and went into their leg. Yeah. I'm like, is that really that big of a fucking deal? But you need to tell people, like, this one kid was fucking stupid. Yeah. He probably, like, was being an idiot. He probably deserved it. He probably <laughs> did. He's probably dead. <laughs> He's probably an ass. He probably killed himself later on doing something else stupid. He's probably a fucking ass, though. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm Jimmy, and this is Jackass. Uh, I, I put uh, <laughs> 20 Ticonderogas in my pants. <laughs> they were number number twos. <laughs> um. But no, I mean, I, I get I get the appeal of the extra pockets. I got the five eleven pants or yes. jeans or whatever for, that you had recommended. I like them. They're I like them better than Levi's. They're more stretchy. Um, they're more comfortable, but they also have the extra because they're tactical pants, yeah. I guess, for like from the tactical or whatever the store five eleven, and you can they have extra magazine pockets. Yeah, so you can roll up your magazine. Yeah. Yeah, he, your Time Magazine. Yeah, your time, time Magazine, person <laughs> of the year. Uh, but yeah, like for your, I don't know, like ammo or whatever in your pocket. Yeah. But I'm like, they're great because I have extra pockets for my AirPods yeah. and also my Burt's Bees and on the other side. And it's like a tight pocket too. Mm-hmm. And it's not an, it's not like an exposed pocket. It's like an internal mm-hmm. pocket, which is cool. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I, I don't use it for guns or anything. Yeah. Uh, gun stuff. Or like, it's not like an idiot. But um, I... Just use it for my AirPods, and it's perfect. Oh my god! Because I imagine putting my AirPods with my fucking when at work. I have a with box your keys and your phone, my box cutter, and at work and shit like that. And I can wear these. I'm like, no, oh, I got my yeah. AirPods pocket 
here, and then I have my box cutter pocket here. So I get the idea of having extra pockets. I like that. Well, you bring but up five eleven ca- cargo shorts. Nah, I've never worn them. They they uh they sell a bunch of other types of pants, right? Cargo and, pants. Yes, they do. they do. And every time they come up with a sale, I'm like, ah, I'm like, I could. Mm, no, I'm good. I'll just stick with my defenders. Yeah, I'll the just... normal <laughs> pants that have like the two extra pockets. Yeah, but that's that's all I need at the moment. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think I I couldn't pull off cargo pants, but those <laughs> who can, uh, Doug, Chris, um, and we and, salute you, <laughs> Andrew Watch. You keep it going, baby. <laughs> cargo shorts are forever. All right, another one from Coach Schneider. These guys are just banging God. them out. They're going back and forth. There's other people coming in the mix here, but we're just going to go down the list here. Gear you hate now, but will probably like in three months. Hmm. I don't really... Uh, I do hate some stuff I own. What do you... I mean, do you hate anything? Like, but I don't think I'm ever going to like it again. <laughs> We've talked about it. Those MXR pedals are probably the worst ones. The distortion. Oh, and then the... The CAE. Yeah, that one. And then the... That was the other one that you have? The Prime. Prime distortion. Yeah. Gotta get rid of those. Just gotta, you know... Tired of looking at them. Just pissing me Get you know. rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, it's like, I guess more broad. It's like fuzz. I don't, I kind of don't like fuzz. I don't, I don't want to say hate, but it's not a huge fan of it as far, I mean, as use for the band and yeah. stuff like that. And, I, and I've said this before, so it's not like, oh, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> no surprise. I just, it's very unusable type of dirt for our band. So I've just kind of like never been drawn to it. But I think the more and more I try fuzz pedals, the more and more I'll find a use for the fuzz pedals. Yeah, well, that's just kind of like on your journey. You're mm-hmm. going to find yeah. ones and I think you'll was, know like, oh, this one's fucking muff. Oh, I don't want li- I don't really want to play that one. Yeah. So I do like tone benders. I do like, like I, yet again, the tone bender from Daredevil. It's like I could totally use that for playing. It yeah. fits. It, like, you could totally use it in the band. Um, so I don't know, the more and more that I try fuzz, I think I'll like it. So I could see myself maybe not in three months, but even longer, maybe just like playing these and just I'm like, oh, I need to add a fuzz to my board to have this for the show or whatever. Um, Did they make a bone bender? I'm sure somebody's done it. Yeah. The I'm bone shaker. I know they have that. The bone shaker. Bone bender. bender yeah. Bender. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've, you know. I've gone back on word, uh, you know, on my own word and saying that I, I would never do that or whatever. I don't want to do that. Especially like, uh, as far as like, oh, going like ant modeling with FR cap. Yeah. I was like, I'll never do that. And now I'm like, I'm loving my Axe 8 <laughs> with my Matrix FR, FR powered And you cap. think you're going to love that forever. Who knows? I could be like, oh, I need to go back to like, oh, uh, you know, what's uh, the best rock sound? Oh, uh, a Gibson into a Marshall. <laughs> That's it. Nothing else. Cable, baby. So who knows? I would say, you know, I've gone back on the FR ant modeler thing, so I could be going back on the fuzz thing. I could be like, fuzz is the best. Fuck overdrive. Give me a fucking line six and a pod, bro. Yeah. (laughs) Don't go (laughs) back that far. So I would say I definitely am not the biggest fan of fuzz. Not that I hate them. Yeah. But I'm like, I could see myself liking them more because as time has progressed i've definitely liked uh, fuzz more and more just need to find the right ones so i don't know and people let me know when they have really cool ones so another cool one is uh doug's uh fat guy little coat fuzz yeah uh 37 effects yep and that one's i like that one a lot i'm like oh it's just really just gnarly fuzz and it's in a cute little box mini pedal so i'm like i like that <laughs> so the more and more i try fu- uh, fuzz pedals i find more that i like so nice. i can see myself Maybe, you know, in a year I could be like, Fuzz is the coolest, you know, just like every other podcast. But who knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't really have anything for that because um, I hate I, my MXR ones. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so we have one from Johnny. He's Johnny do- Ray. He's rolling on a BMK here. So it says a uh, BMK grill edition, burgers, hot dogs, kebabs. That's like out of left field. Yeah, that, kebabs. Like, oh, kebabs are like a completely different. Shit. Animal, completely different beast. Um, I mean, I'm probably gonna have to do in that order. Uh, bang, actually, no, not in that order. Uh, bang, hot dogs, Mary burgers, and kill kebabs. I mean, I mean, kebabs are, I guess, different. I mean, they're they comprise different. I don't know, different types of meat in there, and they can mean anything. If I I'm guess. eating it, 
uh, kebabs <laughs> are way up there. If I'm having to do it, I don't think I've ever actually like. I don't grill that much. Well, it's just like, if you ever seen how they make them? It's really hard to fuck up a hot dog. That's why I'm like, if you're the grill master, make hot dogs all day. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Dump a whole bunch of fucking Hebrew nationals on there. (laughs) Hebrew nationals. God, those are, Hebrew nationals do not do good in my stomach. Really? But I will eat them. What are you, an Oscar Mayer guy or what? I I like. Turkey dog. Nathan's. Nathan's yeah, Nathan's good. are good. Nathan, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Nathan's are damn pretty damn good. good. Uh, I made some one time, and they're like the best hot dogs I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to recreate it. It's like not as good. But I know kebabs done right. I would say, uh, bang. Kebabs. You can put kebabs like in something, right? They go in like pitas or yeah, or you don't just eat them by themselves, right? Yeah, I mean, or you just uh, I'm trying to think of like the diversity you can have with a kebab versus like. A burger is There's on a, a bun. Totally. Uh, yeah, hot it, dogs on a bun. But yeah. it's like, you know, you put it into something, you have it with rice, you have it as part of a meal, not the yeah. center of it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, didn't think about so. that. Mmm, good one. But I'm still going to go bang kebabs. Like, good one. You bring up a very good point, but fuck you. It's the burger and the hot dog thing. Yeah. The only way you can fuck up a hot dog is if you burn it. Yeah. But also, same with a burger. Burgers are pretty good. And a kebab. Mm, mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> now, my whole I, my whole thing that I had to weigh this is all just thrown to the wind here. Kebab's still a bang. I'm going to go because like a burger, bur- a good burger can be way better than a good hot dog. Yeah. So I'm going to go uh, marry, burger, kill hot dog. Okay. But hot dog's still pretty damn good yeah. of that list. Still up there. <laughs> <laughs> then he had another one. God damn so, uh, it. Everyone's just stacking them on know, tonight. People, you know, we asked for one each, please. I don't, think we, no, we I don't think we didn't, <laughs> didn't do that. No, but everybody delivered on these topics. So we're going to try and just, you know, steam right along. Uh, top three candy bars. Um, all right, I'll go first. So I will say Reese's, number one. Snick, yeah. Snickers, number two. Mm-hmm. Number three. I don't even know. I don't know that one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, um, this is your stupid ass joke. Yeah, you got me. Probably go with one of the other Reese's um, that they have. Like they a like, fast break. F- yeah, fucking million uh, candy bars. No, Kit Kat. Yeah, and you know what? Not in that order because they're all. F- it's just like just a, yeah. It, throw t- them all in a bowl, and I'm just gonna eat them. Fuck yeah! It's like depending on the time of day. It's like. Yeah. I might have all three of those. No. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, mine, I, I, and then people are gonna like, cause I was kind of throwing this out there. Reese's, is that really a bar? Mm. It's not really a candy bar, wow. but I, my, it's in my top three too. Reese's, just regular Reese's. Yes. Damn, they're so good. Yeah. A lot of forms of Reese's too. The mini ones, the fucking bunnies, the eggs, uh, oh, I mean, shit. trees, come on, they're all good. Uh, Reese's, <sighs> those is trees. There. Yeah, it's up there. <laughs> 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 Getting the Reese's trees, um, crunch bars. I like crunch bars. I like the rice really? one. So yeah, you can do crackles I mean, or I'll, whatever the hell. I'll eat it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but. I just think of like, oh yeah, like if you're gonna go regular Hershey's bar, that's a no for me. And even like the almonds or whatever, still like I mean, uh, I mean they're dark good. chocolate's probably the worst one. Yeah, it. And then the dark chocolate with almonds, it's like. Can you make this any worse? Can you just put a bullet in the back of my head, please? <laughs> <laughs> Take this hammer and just hit me over the head with it. Over and over again. <laughs> yeah, until I stop moving. No, I like crunch bars. It's something with the uh, the, the crunch that you get. And then, yeah. Or the crackle. What about the crackle bars? Yeah, they're the Mr. Same, Good same, bars. Same fucking thing. I know. They're different. They're the same brand. No, one uh, crunch is Nestle. Uh-huh. And the other ones were Hershey. Yeah, same font. Uh, yeah, they're good. That's right. Yeah, I can I can have that. So it's a little boring with that one, but... Uh, other one, Butterfinger. <sighs> Even though they get like just stuck in your teeth and you're just like oh. picky. Hey, you sometimes with your have tongue, to, you're you like... have to fucking get at it with your fucking fingernail sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, I still like it. I don't know. As a kid, I always liked them. Probably and because then, of the Simpsons. I really do think get it's your hands that. off my Butterfinger. And then like Butterfinger BBs. Oh my God. When those came oh, out, fuck. I was so stoked. These are so good. They're the same fucking thing. And but There's to me whoppers, as a, I, I, but to me as a kid, I'm like, this, oh my God. Bart likes these, so do I. <laughs> and then I'm like, um, I think of it like one time, like, I don't know, somebody 
I was, uh, you know, getting, oh, pick a hard candy. So I, I was like, oh, shit. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get the king size. And they're just like, yeah, sure, get it. I was like, yes. Oh, my God. This is the greatest day of my life. They let me get the king size, like, Butterfinger instead of the regular size. Because normally my parents would be like, no. It's, those are made for a king, and you're not one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's the queen size? Um, uh, treat yourself, young kings. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to revise mine. Hold on real quick. The Reese's Big Cup with the fucking Reese's pieces in it. Yeah. That's the pinnacle. That's that's that, that's like you can't top that. That's the penultimate. Penultimate. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast and for years this guy was just saying penultimate all the time when he meant I, like <laughs> like the ultimate ultimate. I'm like, that's not what that means. Yeah. That's not what that and then like um I like responded to him once on like Instagram. He's like, I looked it up. I didn't know that was what that meant He's really like, i've been saying that for years it's like i mean we all know what you meant but come on man yeah. you meant like <laughs> pinnacle and ultimate yeah so like, it's like he's saying pen penultimate ultimate. is like the second to the ultimate <laughs> so well you like, know you're just leaving that space open <laughs> yeah he's like it's a penultimate it's like yeah and he's like i'll never say that again i was Thanks, saying that asshole. for he's like i was saying that for years <laughs> he's like well because everybody was just jumping on him about it <laughs> it was yeah. pretty funny he's like i didn't know that so <laughs> somebody just feels stupid. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, that, that's a good. I mean, even Butterfinger like ice cream, fucking good. But all right, we have um from Tim Powers, we have a uh, best entry level guitar, Squire, Maestro, First Act, etc. This is out of our wheelhouse. This is, we're talking about gear now. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I know we're getting back what? on track here. Um. <laughs> I know there's so many different ones out there, but I'm just going to say the GOAT is Squire. Just yeah. get, I mean, even like you're going to, if you're going to spend more, get the, what, the vintage vibe or like yeah, the classic vibe, vibe classic yeah. vibe, whatever. Those are, those are really good. The basses are good. The guitars are good. The quality is there. Um, yeah, I would say those are probably above Epiphone quality. Yeah, and even if you get these shittier ones of like the Affinity ones, yeah, you can. They're modular, so you can always change things out. Yeah, and you can be like, oh, I'm gonna upgrade the you know tuners, the pickups, whatever. Da da da. You could literally change out everything. Yeah, at you know at your own time, and that you can afford yeah. to do so. And there are so many aftermarket parts available. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to say that Epiphone doesn't have those. You yeah. Know? And then it's like literally, if you wanted to change the neck, you could. Yeah. And then you know, uh, I did that <laughs> for yeah. my affinity. But I mean, so it's like you could upgrade all these parts that you don't like on an Esquire, and you know, other guitars do that as well. But I'm like, Esquire is kind of like the Fender version of that. So if you get a Fender part, it's like oh, I want to put a Fender bridge on it. You could do that if the parts fit. Whatever, look into it. Or if you decide to upgrade it, you know, you can have all these parts on it. And if you sell it, just take the parts off and put the old ones back on. Yeah. What are some other like standalone beginner ones? Because we just named two ones that were literally uh, under. It's like, oh, the big ass corporation I has know, their. I know, I know, I know. But um, was it like uh, Harley Benton? Those I've, kind. I think I've only played those. I've never at, played those. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ryan from Sixty Cycle. He's gotten some of those. I think he's also gotten. Uh, Firefly. Well, yeah. Um, those are more of like a Gibson style mm -hmm. one, right? Yeah, I've heard those aren't that great. Yeah. Um, I think we like kind of just picked one up and I'm like, yep, this is a guitar, and I put it back on the rack yeah. at his place. And then RJ from Teletalks borrowed one. He says, this thing fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think... <laughs> I think because like, people really want to get cheap guitars that they can be like, oh, this is as good as this. I'm like, sometimes you know, it doesn't need to be as good as something else. It yeah. can just be a good starter guitar. So just get one of those and just start fucking playing. So I don't think it's like, oh, oh, it's kind of sharp at the edges of, like, unless you're going to chop your fucking finger off. Yeah. Like, if the fret edges are like, oh, it's kind of rough. Who cares? Just fucking play. Yeah. I don't think I ever paid any attention to any of that stuff until the past five years or even less. Yeah. To like, what are the fret dressing? I'm like, I don't... Mm -mm. Well, I think um, Squire, they always feel solid. Yeah. I would say over just about any other brand you know budget brand that i've ever held mm -hmm. or played and we're pretty bad at this because i don't really go or gravitate towards budget brands yeah but safe bet is always just squire well dude i have like a hundred dollar squire that's fucking solid and it's mm -hmm. like it's not like wow this thing's like super light it's gonna float away you know it's 
heavy. It's actually like decently weighted. Yeah. And then I have an Affinity Squire that I have yeah. upgraded the absolute shit out of. And so that just shows the difference of yours is not really upgraded except yeah. for the tuners. Wow. And then don't overdo it. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> That's all you need that star yeah. for. There's nothing else about it. It's like partially for looks, but also just for stability. Yeah. And it works. And then you're like, I don't really need to change anything yeah. else. Don't need to change the pickups. I could, but I don't well, need to. You know, yeah, they're fine. And then for me, I changed everything out because I felt like I wanted to. And like, <laughs> the body in the original pit guard. That's the only thing that's original on my guitar. So it just shows you the difference. I mean, you can leave it stock and have it be pretty fucking good yeah. or change the fucking shit out of it and have it be good as well. Yeah. And marginally better. Who knows? <laughs> or even small, you know, small margin better. All right. This is Colin Smith. <laughs> when taking a piss, <laughs> balls in or out? Taking the piss. I would, uh, oh, literally. uh, I would say I pull everything out. It depends, I guess. I always, yeah, no, I always pull, you know, and I, this, uh, the second part of the question also, does anyone actually use the little flap in the boxers to pee through? Oh, I yeah. don't, I never do. I don't know why it's there. I just pull my boxers down, pull the dick well, and balls out. you pull them all the way down, like your pants. I, yeah, like I pull, I pull them like all the way down to my public, ankle. public, public restroom. I pull them, yeah, in, at the urinal, pull them all the way down to my ankles. And uh, you're looking <laughs> to the left. What's up, fellas? Looking to the right? <laughs> Uh no, I mean I yeah, that's that's kind of my deal. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Pull it over the the waistband of the of the underwear. I'm only pulling out what I need, you know. Yeah. You know, you cuz you got to put it all back in. So it's like minimalistic approach. But yeah, I do use the flap if I have them. Really? Some of my some of my boxers don't have them. I've never used it. So I have to like look down. I, mean, like, I think what, I used it when I was Which set am I wearing today? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't use it. Cuz I'm like, who Oh well, yeah, yeah. No. I do. Seems like that seems like a lot of work. Um, I mean, this probably isn't like this is probably TMI, but sometimes I'm wearing basketball shorts, you just go down the leg, dude. Like, no, I've never done just like, that. You just like, <laughs> I've never pull, done pull it up. That. Oh my god, yeah. damn, that's that's too risky. No, it's risky business. It's it's worse when like you go because like the band on these things is, ru- is elastic. Sometimes mm-hmm. you could let go and snap, and then you're like, Woo! and then you're the fire hose in it. You know, you're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Jeez, that's probably too much. Uh, probably should cut that. All right, we got another one from Colin Smith. This one's a little uh, <laughs> a little nicer, probably. All right. So it says, would you ever get another custom guitar? Um, like, uh, yeah. E- Depends on who's offering. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would say yes. Does he mean like from a from a brand? Like, yeah. I would like, I, would, okay. I meant, uh, yeah, I would say like another, another guitar made for you, yeah. for me. Yeah. I would say yes. Not anytime soon. Not only just for like the money part of it, but it just you don't need one. Yeah, I don't need one. I don't know what I would want. Yeah. If I, anything, I would uh, probably another Equits or another guitar. Yeah. So the Equits, um, the hollow body that he has, or semi hollow, the Ashford, which yeah. is an offset that's like hollow body. I'm like, I've never owned a hollow body or semi hollow, and I would really like to have one. So I think that would be really cool. And that whole experience was a lot of fun. And working with Kevin again would be great, but he's got a long list. So maybe if I put my name in now, it'll eventually <laughs> come up because I mean, he's got a lot of people in line, yeah. which is good. You, you can just keep, say keep no, the... you don't want to. You can just like, when it comes back around, oh, hey, uh, nah. Yeah, I'd probably do something a little bit more. Put me back at the bottom. More traditional, so not an, <laughs> not an Evertune, but yeah. just like kind of work with him a little bit more about like, okay, this is something Put a I mastery bridge in there, something. Something, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be cool. Or Nutter, because his... Uh, Astro is yeah. fucking killer. It's that Astro like, Captain or whatever. Mm, yeah, the one with the three like humbuckers that Damn. he he makes. He's got all the fucking switching options in the fucking world, so you can yeah. make it sound like a Strat, a Telly. You can have it make it sound like you know a mini humbucker. You can have like all three humbuckers. Dude, on. And it looks fucking awesome. It, yeah, looks killer. So it'd probably be just me picking out what size neck and just yeah. uh, the color finish on that one, and then he does his. Is he picks out the hardware that works with it and just, yeah, you can get it to do the dive bomb shit, to do the strat stuff. And yeah, that would be really cool. And that would be kind of the, the, a really great, I think I've said it many a time. It's like a great studio guitar. Cause it'd be yeah. Like, I need this type of sound. All right, I'll figure it out. So that would be, if I got one, those would be the two. And I would say, yeah, I would like to do that again, but uh, just not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. I would probably go with a uh, ballet gear. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, and this is part of his question. Is that Kyle, would you ever want a custom bass? 
And then he says, would you build a base? And I would say, you you are building one? Yeah, I'm still working on it. But, um, I need to yeah. get my routing skills up to par. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to build a base, like, who would you go with? You would go with Balagir? Balagir, yeah. I think that'd be kind of cool to get a Balagir base. Mm-hmm. I don't need any more guitars. I mean, yeah, probably could get a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably build them myself. What would you what, what would you want out of that one that you don't have in your others? This uh, from Balagir? Yeah, if you're going to get one. I don't know. Maybe switch it up and get like an active base. I don't know. Like make yeah. it super modern and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, maybe. Humbuckers active. Yeah. Shit, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I mean. Fan threads. If I were to do custom, maybe like if I had the money, like Fender Custom Shop. <laughs> mm. Or um, if I really had the money, Ernie Ball Custom Shop. Yeah, I I think I I think about that, but I would still probably go with smaller builders just because. Yeah. I just don't own I mean, that I process like, was so fucking cool, and I would you know just yeah knowing the person that made it. That's why I'm like yeah, Brian well, or Equit, you know Kevin yeah. Equits. There's a bunch of different builders and stuff. I'm not just gonna stop at one guitar and like oh yeah I'm done forever. No, I'd probably... Yeah, the guys at Balagare, pretty cool too. Yeah. So, so another one from Colin. He's just not... Yeah, he's just knocking them out here. So it's like a machine gun with these the things. fuck pop, 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 pop. can I get a decent sounding and looking live stream from my house? <sighs> Wrong Don't ask, ask us. <laughs> <laughs> we know what not to do for sure. We, we're going to try some stuff. Yeah, we, I mean, we have ideas. We don't have anything locked in on how to do it right. No, I mean, maybe like, you know, watch the space to figure out how we do it. But I, I would say for sure, a good camera. So not a web camera, like for sure. Like you need to get something that's 1080. And if you can have something that auto focuses, because I know a lot of people can get like those, you know, a Canon, like a DSLR type camera. Yeah. And then where it auto focuses and stuff like that. So if you're going to do something where it's just one camera, um, Make it a good one that has, you know, everyone in frame. So if you, or if you are doing close shots or whatever, it, you know, focuses and stuff like that. And then um, get it HDMI out to your computer to get that yeah. full 1080 going in. And then um, you need a good mix. So if you're doing just one mic, then I guess make sure it's a really good mic that can handle all the SPLs. You know, all the, you know, just make sure it can handle all the, you know, the DB pressure and the fucking, it doesn't just fucking. <laughs> Yeah. Out or whatever. Or, totally. Or. And it just, so if you're going to do one, just make sure it can handle that. And that's meant for that yeah. kind of thing. Um, there are some mics. I know that they, they, I think, I can't remember if it's Sennheiser or Sure does like the flat condenser mics that are really meant to be able to pick up a lot of the room sound. You could do that. Or if you get like a, straight into the mixer, get that, uh, you know, out to somehow digitally to your computer or yeah. cell phone. I know. We talked about it last time. It's like the iRig stream thing. Yeah. Where it has two RCA inputs. So you can do a whole mix on your mixer and it just goes RCA out left and right to this and it just goes to your phone. So if you're doing that and an iPhone, I mean, even an iPhone 6 are pretty damn good, you yeah. know, better than that webcam that we used. <laughs> so yeah. you'll be doing good, good shit. So that and then your upload speeds have to be good. I would say it depends on what you're going for, but it should you know be a computer that's hardwired into the internet so you can just get good stream good upload yeah. speeds and stuff like that making sure you're not, no wi-fi lag yeah none of that so that that's yeah. that's all 30 of, megabytes per second mm-hmm. <laughs> i would yeah all those things maybe not that much are the, on the checklist for sure that i would think of but yet again we haven't you know put it into practice yet we yeah we're the, fucking uh, pros when it comes to that shit bro like i said we just know what not to do um you know uh Abe Newman's band, uh, Ordinary Sons, Mm -hmm. they did a live stream on their uh, Facebook page. Yeah. uh, Where they kind of set up on one of the guys' like porch, you know, in the backyard. Yeah. And they played like, they played, you know, some songs, the drums, kind of more of a stripped back, but he's still like playing drums, acoustic guitar, and then Abe on bass. And then the, you know, the singer sang, sounded really good. I jealous. Don't know what they used or how they did it, but uh, it may be <laughs> Abe Newman can comment on this, but he's maybe the person to ask and check out his band on Facebook, Ordinary Sons, and check out that feed. That, I think that's something that, that at least the singer has been working on for a while and trying yeah. to implement the band. So maybe it's definitely a work in progress. They've been doing that. So it's not, I wouldn't expect your first live stream to be the fucking best. So keep at it. Keep working on it and let us know what works because we want to try it for our band. Yeah. 
And then uh, BJ Jesbera, friend of the show, says, how often do you clean your equipment? So uh, not just guitars, but like maybe amps, pedals and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I'll come in first here. Almost never. Yeah. I'll clean the dust off of things like guitars. I kind of just like it dust builds up just like, even if you're like, you never play it. I'm like, yes, I do. I just put, I put it well, on the you fucking don't, stand. Like, and when underneath I'm done. The, you don't get underneath the strings, you know? Mm-hmm. If I do like a string change, I'll kind of clean dust off, but yeah. dust I'll clean off. But as far as like skin cells, sweat, uh, you know, blood, why did you have to say or skin it? cells? Cause it's all the buildup that's on there. Yeah, <laughs> Think, uh, I won't clean that up. Makes it worse. I won't clean that up. I won't polish the guitar to kind of like, oh, make sure it's shiny. I don't do that. But the dust, I kind of just wipe off just because, and I don't even get a rag. I just get my finger, just poof, wipe it, and then I put it on my fucking pants. Um, yeah, I don't really clean them either, but um, I don't know. I think I, since I have them hanging on the wall, I'll like clean the, the cutaways. Because mm-hmm. it's just I'll, like, even if, even if, fuck, I can't talk. Even if you play them, yeah. it still collects dust. Yeah, it was like I think, like Co Schneider years ago. He was like made a comment like, "So you just don't really play this guitar?" I'm like, "No, I play it all the time. It just it's on a stand, so it collects dust when I'm not playing it." Yeah, when I have my shit, my all my shit in a garage, so mm-hmm. probably not a good idea <laughs> that I'm actually actively using. I'm like using a bench grinder, like you know, 15 feet in That's the opposite direction. That's probably not good for pickup That's- sex, to be honest. That's fine. You were just saying how close it was. I'm like, no, it's far enough away. Metal dust flying to the air. Not good on your magnets. I'll, you know, I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it off. <laughs> you won't be able to. <laughs> you turn the magnet off and then it's fine. Yeah. It drops right off. Uh, I'll wipe my pedals down. Yeah. Only for the gram. Yeah. That's it's like, the only time I would do it. You cannot take a picture of your guitar or pedal with fucking hair. On it, hair. I well, I'll just blow that away. But I'm like, yeah. if there's dust on a pedal, I'll kind of clean that up. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I have like fucking wiry beard hairs, and yeah. I'll take a picture and I'll look at it. And I'm like, son of a God bitch. Damn it! I didn't see that thing with my own fucking two eyes. Yeah, but the but camera, my, but my, I could my, see my it. phone picked it up for yeah. sure. Yeah, you're right. And the dust, like right where your fingers are, there's either like a circle or it's like mm-hmm. the spot you don't touch. So you have to like. Go, get in there with your yeah, t-shirt uh, I will, obviously yeah i'll, I'll do my pro my it. best to clean it up but i mean yeah. i don't mind it if it's my pedal board that i'm using i don't mind if it gets dusty or dirty or yeah. whatever yeah i really only it depends on how bad it is but if it's like i'm like oh i'm a, a pedal that i'm like you know kind of showing off or whatever taking a picture for and i'm like totally like this is so dumb to say but i'm like yeah for instagram i'll clean it up and we i think we said the story of like when we uh we're at uh you know talking to roman at uh schnobel tone he was uh, showing off his daily driver. I'm like, oh, we're going to take a picture just with my phone for Instagram. He's like, oh, shit. Hold on. He takes his shirt and he cleans it up. He's like, oh, there's smudges and shit on it. It's like dust. He's like, got to clean that up. He's like, dude. He's like, I do YouTube, man. I, I got to make my, it's his pedal. He's like, I got to make this shit look good, man. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets it. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big you know, cleaning person. So I should probably take more care of fret cleaning. Yeah. Which I'm have not done yet i've talked about it i think on the patreon i'm like i need to do this yeah well i I got green frets on my uh, p base we i probably should just at least clean the frets themselves if you care about the fretboard and how that looks that's on you i think i don't really think that affects the playability but definitely the frets themselves because you can get the like feel the scratchiness of the frets but if they're smooth um yeah that's that's Affects play, but I don't really feel it on the bass. But I don't really, you know, I don't. I, yet again, it's not to, to me. I'm like, I didn't get that bend right because of that fret. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's just because you fucking suck. That's why. <laughs> it would be, be better. Yeah. So I maybe should clean things a little bit more. But I like my guitars, especially with the Roni going around. You know, I like should be cleaning that shit all the time. Yeah. Sanitizing, disinfecting. I thought you were talking about the Roni, like the Rice Roni guitar. Yeah, the, that Roni too. Mm. Has that's one. not going I, around. I played that, and that, that's one that I think he wipes down with a diaper. God. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a cool guitar. Anyway, one more, and then we're out of here. So, Colin Smith again. Would it be physically... <laughs> I didn't realize that was the last one. Would it be physically possible to 420 during a 69? I get it. Yes. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. Gummies. Oh. Yeah. Take some weed gummies, edibles, edibles. Some weed gummies, <laughs> some marijuana weed gummies. Some marijuana gummies. Some fucking THC yeah, 
gummies. Yeah, nice. As I say that, the TH, the the gummies with the uh, CBD gummies. <laughs> CBD is uh, different than no, THC, know. as far as I know. It is. <sighs> it's yeah, we're this... not ones to talk about no. it, but no, I think we told totally. It's not like you'd be like, oh yeah, just rip a bong load and then go to. T- <laughs> 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 Colin, you <laughs> dirty boy. That's uh, <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you after the show. <laughs> you're a bad kid. You know, <laughs> you're, you're a bad, bad boy. You're a bad kid. Let's get on out of here. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. But before we go, I just want to say thank you to the Facebook group for all the topics and questions. Yes, and you guys killed it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. There was a lot <laughs> yeah. of them in there. So <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, yeah, you guys good fucking mix of the ugly. Fucking crushed there. it. We'll have to do another <laughs> one where we uh, do the IG. I know there's yeah, some people we, we that didn't are, forget about yeah, you. Yeah, they're th- where they're more following along on Instagram than Facebook. Which, uh, you know, if you like the show, you can follow along on our social nice media. Segue. You know, on our Facebook group, search the Tone Jerks, and you will find us. Join in the group and join in all the fun. Or follow us on Instagram. Or and or follow us on Instagram. <laughs> you too could post five topics that we'll probably read. <laughs> yeah, at the Tone Jerks, <laughs> you'll know, find us. We're posting cool shit on the reg. And if you really like what you hear, you can help support the show on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. But if you double down for two bucks a month, two bucks, man. you get an extra episode <laughs> every week. And you get, you know, um, the whole backlog of Patreon It's a shitload. Yeah, over 130. All to your, you know, favorite podcatcher via an RSS feed. Just, you know, take that link and put it on your favorite podcatcher. You get all the Tone Jerks Patreon bonus episodes. You get the free tone jerks episodes that's a lot i mean that's a lot of jerking around it is it's i'm like that's over 250 episodes dang 260 i guess but i mean still that's a well that's over 250 that's a it's it's, it's really a fucking lot so um you know join the patreon and just for a thank you you know a sizable acknowledgement kyle you got a list over there i got it right here give me those names babe (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Baby, <laughs> um, I rewrote them actually, so I can actually. <laughs> I know you, actually, you, it doesn't really. It, it doesn't really. You were saying that it, like it hurt your hand to write. <laughs> oh them. my god, I was down like. <laughs> not that there's a lot of them. It's just the fact that like who yeah, writes I'm not bragging anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're well, like I was down maybe like fifteen, probably not even like twelve, maybe. Not to be like, like, oh, we're writing the fucking like. <laughs> my god, damn. It's this. I haven't had to write anything in a long ass time, mm-hmm. and like even some of my letters, like I'm like, yeah, just like squiggle. Like, well, you'll write notes for the show of like El Camino, or you'd be like, yeah, topic Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, like, like you don't, you don't even have to like what remember what the topic is. It's like that, I'll introduce it. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, and then I'll just this fly is Brian's this. segment. I'm not going to write any more or think about, and it. I can't write any less. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could. I probably could <laughs> be. Yeah, or you just draw pictures. <laughs> draw Brian's face. Uh, who's that? I All right, he's scary. <laughs> I'm scary, Mister. Oh, no, you guys, you're scaring me, lady. <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh, God, <laughs> I thought about that the, the other day. That that lady who kept talking to us. That Nam. Oh, the first Nam that we yeah. went to. Like, well, would you like to look at this fucking stand-up base? And you could hear uh, that story on our Patreon. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> give me those names. All right. Come so on. I have uh, Andrew Walsh, Adam Rohr from the Let Him Hear podcast, Doug King, Doug Christ from 37 Effects. We talked about him earlier. He's cranking those things out. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a <laughs> Facebook page that you yeah. like. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Abe Newman, Michael Newman, Aaron Taylor, Nicholas Ogburn, Nicholas Payson. Colin Smith, Jason Fuzzmonger, Joe from Like My Pedals, Will, and RJ from the Just Surprise Me podcast, The Jism Boys. <laughs> Did you write that down? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I just put JSM, so yeah. I just know to like, just read it. Jism. Jism. The Jism Boys. All right. Rom Yorn. Them Jism Boys are bad again. <laughs> Them Jism Boys are bad again. Don't ask me what, though. Uh, just some good old boys. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Davis, Jim Bowers, Johnny Ray, Steve Mike, Steve Rao from 60 Cycle Hum, Kevin Equits from Equits Guitars, Co Schneider from the Flip and Flippers podcast, Brett Alexander, Alvaro Viramontes, Brian from Nutter Guitars, Leon from Pelican Noiseworks, Abe Froman, Sausage King of Chicago. <laughs> 
Sean Fahey, Sean Arbo from Gun Street Wiring Shop, Sean Wright from Lollygagger Effects, Juan Ortiz from Tone Hungry Effects, Mike Oxbig, <laughs> Zach Hale, Eric Merrill from YouTube, uh, Scott Hamilton from the Effects Loop Podcast, and Tim Nowick from Bardic Audio Devices. All right. That's Thank it. you all. Thank you so much. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.